Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Dice Forge, which is a game where players are going to forge some dice. Now, I'm going to be showing you how this works in a two-player run-through, although before I get going, I should warn you right up front, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel right now. That way, if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then let's start forging some dice. And here is the situation. The gods themselves have decided to put on a contest. And one lucky mortal will get to raise up and become a new god. How do we mortals compete? Well, the gods have given each of us one of these ancient, powerful, mystic dice. Or actually two. One die that produces sun shards and one die that produces moon shards and in addition to moon shards also produces victory point now each of these dice everybody starts with these same two dice and on all sides they produce lots of gold um and occasionally if you get lucky some uh shards some sun and moon shards so we've each got those and we are going to use those to gather resources if we gather gold we can spend that gold to pay tribute to the gods which will give us more upgraded die faces to make our dice more powerful instead if we get these shards we can use them to go on epic quests which have all been set up here in this pantheon area and those give us points and give us special powers and stuff like that now we are going to do this for nine rounds in a two-player game or a four-player game, for that matter. In a three-player game, you actually go for ten rounds. So here's the little round counter, and we're starting in round one. I will be the first player. Now, uh, setting this board up, there's a couple interesting things. All these cards that are out here have different costs. Uh, these cost one sun shard. The, this costs four sun shards. This costs five. This one, the toughest one to get, costs five sun shards and five moon shards. So, uh, no, not surprising, it's the most powerful, most valuable quest we can go on but these are kind of randomized these two these two and if i recall correctly i think these two so these six piles of cards are going to be the same no matter what but all these other piles of cards there are two different options they can be an easy one an introductory one and a complex one so let's like look at uh, this super tough one i'm going to be playing with the complex version of this card again it costs five sun and five moon shards it's worth 16 points plus an additional point for every upgrade i've already done for my dice by the time i earn this now so this is a complex version of what could have been a simpler thing, this uh, Hydra type, which is just worth 26 points and um, no other bonuses. So you can tell if they're easy because they got this little symbol on the back. So if you're playing your first introductory versions or you're using this as a gateway game, you basically set the board up with all the simpler, more straightforward ones. Or you can set it up with these slightly more complex ones that require a little bit more uh, gameplay thought. Or you can mix and match. And that's what I've done. Some of these are the complex complex versions. Some of them, like uh, say this Medusa, it could have been the complex one, but instead it's the simple one that goes into this slot. So anyway, so there's a little bit of variable setup. One other thing that's very, very important as part of setup, you may have noticed, hey, the box itself is actually part of the gameplay. If you look at the side of the box, there's this art here that lines up with this edge of the board. So this is actually supposed to be Valhalla or Mount Olympus or whatever you want to think of it, where the gods live, because this is where you store um, the dice and all the little upgrades you can get over the course of the game. Plus, you store one more thing here, this. This is a collection of all the different die faces we can snap on to upgrade our dice. And it comes in this really cool container. I just really love this. I mean, the production values in this game are stellar. It has this big ribbon to hold it in place, and that's important because once you take the ribbon off and then slide it out, you'll find here are all the dice we can upgrade. And there's a little reminder here of where they all go into the different slots. So. I've already got this set up. In a two-player game, each of these 10 pools has two um, dice faces removed. So with more players, there'd be more opportunities to get this level three gold or this level one moon gem. And there'd be other ones in these faces. I've already gone on ahead and in a two-player game gotten rid of basically half of all the upgrades we can give. And these sit up here in the realm of the gods because this is where we go to pay tribute to the gods. And so it's just an extension of the main board right there. All right, so that's it. We are set up, ready to go. I am the first player, and we're going to be playing, like I said, over nine rounds. So how does it work? Well, the first thing that happens on any player's turn is everybody rolls all their dice. So this is a game where you are constantly seeing new resources coming in nonstop, whether it's your turn or not. 
And there's a bonus thing. In a two-player game, uh, at the beginning of any player's turn, everybody rolls their dice twice. So let's go. I'm going to roll my dice twice at the beginning of my turn. And I got a, very nice, a Sun Shard and some gold. And as the first player, I started with three gold. So now I'm up to four, and I get to roll again. Now remember, the rolling again only happens in a two-player game. So I roll again, and I got two more gold, which is the most likely thing to happen, because on this die, it's a four and six chance. On this die, it's a five and six chance. So early on, you're going to be getting a lot of gold. So not only do I get to roll on my turn, but so does every other player. So now Jen is going to roll her dice, and ugh, she got one gold and two victory points. Boom. And boom. She, as the second player, Jen started with two gold, so now she's up to three. And then she rolls again. And ooh, one gold and one more shard. Okay. So the rolling is done, and now my turn begins. On your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either go on quests or pay tribute. If you're going to pay tribute, you use your gold to upgrade your dice. If you go on quests, you use your shards. To, uh, to basically go, you know, to go and, and get all these special powers. I'm going to start out because I've got six gold, and right now I can only hold 12 gold. There's nothing worse than getting completely full in your vault of gold and then rolling more and not being able to take it. So I want to spend some of my gold. I'm going to start out by um, paying tribute to the gods. I've got six gold to spend, and I can buy as many faces as I can afford. There's one restriction, though. I can only buy one of any type, or one from any pool. So this is a pool, this is a pool, a pool, a pool, a pool. There's ten pools here. These dice I cannot buy. No, so there's no... Instead, you earn these by going on certain quests. But these are all the ones I can buy. These cost two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight and twelve. So what do I gotta buy? Well, I've got six bucks. So I think for starters, I'm gonna spend three of that six bucks and buy one of these. Now this uh, means I can roll more red Sun shards. So I'm going to add this to one of my dice, and I've still got three bucks to spend. Now I don't have to. I could stop buying or I could keep spending. Although I cannot buy another because you can only buy one from each pool. But I could spend my other three bucks and get one of these um, four gold. But I think instead I'm going to spend and get um, one of these. So I'm going to spend two more, and now I'm almost broke. But and I don't have, you know, there's nothing cost one, so I can't buy any more. So I'm going to save that last gold for later and buy some stuff. And now I've got two upgrades. I can apply both of these to one of my dice, or I can spread them around. And that's a central strategic decision about this game. Because gold is plentiful in this game, and you really want to upgrade. So the question is, do I put both of these on one die to make that die stronger so it has a better shot of of giving me something other than gold, or do I spread them so both of my dice have a slightly less upgraded chance of giving something good? Now, this die already is a bit, because it gives me a blue or a victory point. So, you know, if I put both of these on this die, then this die will have only a one in three chance of producing gold, and that's pretty good. I want stuff other than gold. So let's go on ahead. I'm gonna put both of these on here, and I'm gonna focus on making one die great, and my other die is probably just gonna be producing gold for me. Maybe every once in a while I'll get lucky and it'll produce some red. So here's how you upgrade them. It's super simple. You take the given thing, you use it as like a little pry, and it pops the other one up. Now I save this for later, because sometimes you have to keep track of how many things you've upgraded. And I just snap this in. I've made this die more powerful. Well, I've certainly made it different. And now it has less of a chance to provide gold and more of a chance to provide moon shards. And I'm going to upgrade it again. And now it could produce red as well. So this is my number one super powerful dice. Don't let me down, buddy. And that was my turn. So you can see how fast and simple a turn is. At the beginning of a turn, everybody rolls their dice twice in a two-player game. And then whoever is the active player either spends some gold to upgrade their dice or spends some shards to go on a quest. My turn is over. It is now Jen's turn. So she's going to roll her dice twice, as am I. Let's have Jen go first. Wah! Ooh, two more points and another gold. One, two. So that's pretty lucky. This is the die that gives more interesting stuff because it has a 33% chance of either providing victory points or um, shards. So let's have her go again. And she gets two gold, which is the more common re um, result you're going to get. All right. So Jen's up to seven gold. Now I'm getting to roll again, and I'm hoping my new souped up die is going to give me something other than gold. See what it gives me. It, 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 it spits in my eye and gives me gold. I just made two. Let's try this again. All right, well, all right, so that's uh, gold from my normal die and two victory points. All right, there we go. So it is now Jen's turn, and what is she going to do? 
Now, she could um, go pay tribute to the gods as well because she's got um, seven gold. Or, the interesting thing is, Jen's starting her turn with one sun shard, which means Jen could spend that sun shard. This represents you moving around from quest to quest. This is where we start in the central area. Jen could come over here because this and this both only cost one. So Jen could buy either of those two. I think that's what Jen's going to do. Instead of what you saw me do, I upgrade my die, Jen's going to go on a quest. She can go to any of these spaces, but this is the only one where she has shards she can afford. So she's going to come here. She's going to spend one to come here. And so Jen could either in, um, you know, get the help of this old elder, or she could go and defeat, oh dear, and I just knocked everything around. They kind of stuck there. These little pixies. Wow. Shoot. I'm going to have to fix all that. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, I'll fix that in a second. Right now, let's just go on ahead. And uh, Jen's going to go on ahead, and she spent one to get this guy. This um, is now, Jen did not upgrade dice. She upgraded this. What this does is, this symbol means it's called to reinforcement. At the beginning of Jen's turn, for the rest of the game, every turn, she will have the opportunity to turn three gold into four victory points. So this is a good money sink for her. Right, so that was her turn. And at the end of it, we are now going to move on from round one to round two. And uh, we're both going to get to roll dice again, and we're going to continue. Now, um, I've made a bit of a mess here. So tell you what, folks, I am going to... That, those are the basics. Every turn you roll dice, whether it's your turn or not. When it comes around to your turn, you spend the resources to either pay tribute to the gods, to upgrade your dice, or do quests. Um, if you want to watch a little bit more of that, because I haven't gotten as far as I thought, you can hit the eye up there to go to the extended playthrough. By then, I will have cleaned all this up, and we'll play through a few more rounds so you can see some more action. Or you can go to Final Thoughts and here with Jan and I thought of Dice Forge. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.